The new MacBooks with M1 came out last week with a bang. Reviews, benchmarks, and superlatives have filled the YouTube airwaves. These are fantastic devices, and I really like mine, but I've come across a few issues in the last week related to performance, USB, and display. Hey, I'm Jerry, and yes, the MacBooks Air and Pro with M1 are just crazy. Apple has pulled off something that surprised everyone and exceeded expectations. The new M1 chips are the first Apple Silicon system on chips made to run a full Mac computer, and they instantly blew past lower and some mid-tier Intel iMacs. I'm not gonna go into benchmarks today. You can watch my other video on that if you want, but the short story is that the cheapest Macs are now as fast in many situations as existing Intel iMacs costing twice as much. Overall, the new Macs with M1 are fast, exciting, and worthy of praise. But in my week with them, I've come across a few issues that I think are important to share. I've seen some performance issues on a few occasions. The most notable for me has been in Final Cut Pro, where I edit multi-cam 4K video. I have two 4K tracks for my Sony a6400s and a separate audio track. I get jittery scrubbing and stuttering playback. It's, you know what, it's easy to see in this video. If you watch as I scrub, you can see it's not very smooth. And if you watch the timeline as the playhead goes over the cut, you see dropped frames. Even just dragging the mouse around the title screen has caused beach balls on the MacBook Pro M1 with 16 gigs of RAM. And all of these issues happen with and without an external display. And I actually have seen worse issues on the Air M1 with eight gigs of RAM. The first night I had these, I tried to edit my first video on this Air and it took me three hours to edit the first two minutes. I had issues with playback stalling for not just a second or two, but minutes. Each time I dragged B-roll clips in, I would get a beach ball and then nothing would play for sometimes seconds, sometimes minutes. Sometimes I needed to close Final Cut and reopen it, but shortly after the issue would return. Then I started losing audio when dragging clips in and same thing. Sometimes it would return, sometimes I needed to quit. Lucky for you, I was actually able to get a video of these issues. The clip is about 90 seconds if you wanna skip past it. There's no audio. So that was really frustrating, and it was after midnight, so I was tired. I finally moved the project over to the iMac to complete the first video. The next morning, I rebooted this Air and so far have been unable to reproduce those issues I saw with this. It's possible that the M1s don't like the Sony footage shot in S-Log2, I don't know, but it was really annoying. I've also seen a couple of crashes with things like Final Cut and Photoshop. I'm not using the beta version of Photoshop, so I'm running version 22.0.1, under Rosetta 2 translation, and Photoshop has crashed at least four times on me when doing things like masking an object. I've needed to relearn the lessons of the late 90s and early 2000s to make sure I saved quick and often so I don't spend time on three masks and lose them on a crash. You know, hypothetically. These new Macs have two USB 4 ports with Thunderbolt. I'm not getting high speed out of these ports. I mean, it's not slow, but it's pretty far behind my iMac and slower than the early 2020 MacBook Air. This T7 drive is a USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 drive. 
capable of up to 10 gigabits per second. The 2020 iMac does the best with a Blackmagic read speed at 910 megabytes per second. The i3 Air from early 2020 gets 885 megabytes per second read, and the M1 MacBooks get around 780 megabytes per second. So there's definitely some kind of bottleneck somewhere inside the M1 MacBooks, and I assume the Mini as well. If you have a Mini and you're seeing these issues, let me know below. But this is not limited to just USB-C either, I don't think. I have a dock. I'm not gonna go into what brand today, but the dock has an ethernet connection and it was a bit sporadic when transferring files from these computers to my server. When copying the files from the M1s, the speed just kind of jumped all over the place compared to the i3 Air and the iMac, which had a very consistent copy speed. There could be a number of reasons for this because you know networks and other computers and disks and whatever, but actually running iPerf showed a pretty consistent speed. So I don't know. And now display issues. First, you probably know that Apple says that the M1 MacBooks are limited to one external display. That's not an issue for me and how I plan to use it, but it can be harder than you think to get 60 Hertz on the external display. And if you don't know, that means that even moving cursors or windows around the display at 30 Hertz, they're gonna look choppy and slow. So you really do want that 60 Hertz. The only way I found to get 60 Hertz on an external display is by using HDMI with either Apple's multi-port AV adapter or with that dock I have, which has a USB-C connection to the computer and HDMI to the monitor. So you may be thinking, yeah, well, that's good. That's all I need. Well, good for you. You can skip ahead. But if you have a fancy Thunderbolt monitor like this BenQ PD3220U, the M1 MacBooks will only display 30 Hertz. And yes, I did try to manually set the refresh rate, but there was no option above 30 Hertz when connected this way. This exact same issue also happens with DisplayPort connections through a dock no 60 hertz options in display preferences. But guess what? All of this works correctly on the i3 MacBook Air with HDMI, Thunderbolt, or DisplayPort. So there's no issue with the cable, dock, or monitor. For now, I can use an adapter with HDMI for desktop use, but I'm not able to use another dock that I really want to. And this definitely is, or it looks like, an M1 Mac issue. And here's the last issue I saw with the display. When connected via USB-C dock to my external display, and also using the built-in display, I left my desk for a while to go to lunch. When I came back, the MacBook display would not turn on. I disconnected and reconnected the dock and the display just would not come back. You know what? Lucky for us, I took another video. So I left my MacBook Pro M1 for about an hour and went to lunch. And when I came back, I do not have anything on the MacBook screen. I was using dual displays with the MacBook and this external monitor, and now nothing. If I disconnect the cable, there's nothing coming back to the display. You can see that the computer's on, but I still get nothing. If I put the computer to sleep, I'll give it a second to go to sleep. Wake it back up. and nothing. Even with Touch ID recognizing that I unlocked the Mac, I had nothing on the internal display. I plug the external display back in. Eventually, there we go. Well, that's new but it looks like the external display is back. Very strange. So anyway, I guess maybe don't leave your MacBook M1 unattended. I don't know. After that video, I just rebooted the laptop and everything was back to normal. So after a week of using these new MacBooks with M1, I really like them and I'm really excited to be using them. The allure of the performance, the newness, and the battery life that's just insane is too much to keep me from using it. But most people need to know and realize that these are brand new first generation products, and it's going to take some time to find these bugs. If you're like me and you just want to live on the bleeding edge and test new things, then I absolutely recommend these. But be prepared for bugs in software and hardware that could bring what you're doing to a halt. 
If your life or job depends on stable software, then maybe just hold off for a couple of months or even until the next processors come out. Making YouTube videos is not my full-time job and I can live with a few crashes a day. If it looks like I did something wrong here or if there's something else I should be doing, let me know in the comments below. If you're ready to make the jump to a new MacBook Air or MacBook Pro with M1 and you're still trying to decide which one, check out this video over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time. Thank you.